Hey, Toronto. Welcome to How's the Market podcast. I'm Dave. I'm Kate. And we're joined by a very special guest, Mr. Max. Yes, at Max the Weenie, if you'd like to give him a follow. He's one of the most popular agents in the office, and we're very happy to have him on as a guest. Max is just going to blow up here. (laughs) Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about everything you need to consider for your search when you're looking for a new home, whether it's a freehold or condo. And stay tuned to the end because we're going to share our top three West End pet-friendly condos. Very exciting. The one, the only, Mr. Max. Mr. Max the weenie. He had a very rough day in the office and he decided he wanted to unwind by hopping onto the podcast and taking a load off on that chew toy. Did you tell me every single like that we get, Max is going to get a new toy? Yes. For every one like, Max is going to get a treat, a toy, and I'm going to call him a good boy because he's a very good boy. Trifector. (laughs) So make sure you hit that like, make sure you subscribe. Maybe Max will make a reappearance if, you know, everybody really likes it. (laughs) And I would say leave a comment if you have any questions for Mr. Max. He will be happy to reply to them. Nice. So today we're going to talk about the joys of trying to find a new home for you and your fur baby. Yes. When you have fur babies, maybe they're your only babies. Maybe they're in addition to your babies. It's definitely a... A factor that you have to add into the consideration of it. Definitely. And I wanted to ask you as someone who's been in the industry for quite a while, what are your experiences? I wanted to pick your brain on how it's different for people who have fur babies and maybe they don't think about it at the very beginning. How is the process different when you're looking for a home? Let's divide it into looking at freehold homes versus condos. Okay. If you're looking at freehold at a home, considerations like is the backyard fenced in? Am I going to have to put a fence in? A lot of people enjoy ones that back onto green space or a school. That can be great for going out for a big W. I won't say the W word. Can I be honest with you? Max hates walks. He doesn't react to the word. He will actually run and hide when we pull his collar out. Oh, wow. This is a safe space. (laughs) Just don't say the C word. The C word. Jeez. Oh, yes, the tax. Max comes for his cheese tax. He makes sure. <laughs> I have a feeling there's going to be like a clip of uh, a cut to the uh, to the song of the cheese tax. <laughs> I can definitely do that. We're going to yeah. make one with Max too. Yeah. That'll be the best day of his life. Yeah. So uh, definitely the yard's one consideration, location, but also stairs, layout, that sort of thing. I'm sure Max doesn't run up some of the older steep stairs yeah. quite as easily. I guess it depends on the breed of dog that you have and the age, especially people with yeah. older dogs versus younger puppies, even some Labrador, some really dogs that don't have a problem with stairs. Sometimes you need to think about carpet runners. If you've got really slippery, high gloss stairs, that can be really dangerous for your pet, whether they're young and people or too. old. And people. <laughs> we yeah. have arms to catch ourselves. That dog is going right down the stairs. Yeah. Have you ever had the, the doggy door? I've never had a doggy door. I'm pretty sure Max would never use it because, again, he is an indoor cuddle boy. (laughs) But I don't know. What are the security risks of having a doggy door? I've never really thought about it too hard. I think that they're less common in this climate, especially when you get the winter because of trying to seal it off and that sort of thing. You've got too much... You lose too much R value and heat loss through there. I feel like my first thought when I hear doggy door is raccoons. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that would be... Yeah, not much doggy door, but stairs is a huge consideration for us. Whether it has an elevator, if there's like four flights of stairs, this little guy is not supposed to do stairs, is really bad for their backs. Obviously, he's a pretty unique breed, a little needy, I will say. But I know there's a lot of people who stairs is a huge thing, especially when you have a shadow dog like Max. That's what we call him. Every time you turn around, he's right behind you. You can't be in another room for five minutes without him coming to say hi. It's always supervising. Yeah, so he's going to follow you throughout the house. And if you've got stairs and you just don't feel like bringing him up, he's just going to sit there and wait for you. So I do think it's a big consideration that a lot of people don't think when they're thinking like, am I moving into a townhouse, a free condo? Yeah, so the the, the, the kind of stacked condo townhouse is probably not the best ideal situation. It depends how often you're home. If you're willing to do those stairs, you want a doggy gate. Absolutely. (laughs) And now one of the things you mentioned to me that I haven't considered was proximity to you know wh- whether it be a vet or to a a dog store yes. a pet store vet definitely we are lucky enough i live in the east end in the beaches so there is a pet vet or hospital on pretty yeah. much every corner pets are very big in the area and lots of dogs especially being very close to the beach. So that is a huge consideration. I've known some people who lived in downtown Toronto and had to travel 45 minutes to their vet, which if you're going a couple times a year, it's not a big thing. If you have a dog that has a lot of issues, is older, health concerns, that can be really inconvenient. You're 
taking time off work. And that's something yep. people don't think about. And pet stores. I have a car. So pet store isn't the biggest thing for me. But if you're living in an area like Liberty Village, if you're living in downtown Toronto, bags of dog food are very heavy. Max doesn't go through a lot. But I imagine for a larger size dog, carrying like a 30 pound bag of food on the TTC or in Uber. You wouldn't need a gym membership. Yeah, it's not going to be a fun time. Yeah. And taking them in to get their treats. He loves to go in. He loves to play with all the new toys. So we try and take him in all the time. That's a huge thing for us. It's a bonding experience with us. Sometimes it's a little family date. We go out to the toy store and let him pick something out. So as silly as it sounds, we don't have any kids. So he's our little baby. And I know a lot of people feel the same way and yeah. treat their pets as such. Absolutely. Absolutely. So all those location... Uh, can apply to both freehold and to condos. Now, when you get into condos, there's a few other different considerations. We talked a little bit about the sort of the condo townhouse number of stairs. When you actually move into a condo or purchase a condo, you're getting the unit itself, but you're also buying shares in a corporation. Mm -hmm. Now, those corporations, everyone has different rules. Some of them have restrictions on the number of pets you can have. Mm -hmm. You can have pets, the size of pets, any variation of so we you have to review the status certificate so that you have an understanding that hey this is going to work for me um some condos have noise restrictions as well so you can there can be issues if uh you bring a very large dog into a condo that might have a, a restriction of like 35 pounds yep i've even seen restrictions on certain breeds breeds that are considered to be a little bit more aggressive all certain types of dogs there are some that are restricted they restrict size they restrict the number. And the thing is that information is not readily available to a buyer just searching on their own. You're not going to find that info on realtor.ca or condos.ca. That's something you really have to reach out to your realtor to further investigate. You also want to make sure that you're correct when you find this information. If you do try and find it on your own, because yep. you could end up, your home's going to be your most expensive purchase you ever make. You could end up moving into a property and finding out that you're actually breaking the condo rules. And I can't imagine being put in that situation no. where I have to choose whether I want to move out of my house or get rid of my dog. Yeah. I can't imagine being in that situation. So being really cautious. So you, you want to really make sure when you are doing the review of the status, whether it's before putting an offer in or while you're during the process of doing your due diligence, is that you actually talk to your real estate lawyer, talk to your real estate agent and make sure that it's going to fit for what you're looking for. Absolutely. And... I'm sure a lot of people don't even consider this, but again, as someone who's been doing this for quite a while, what are some of the repercussions that can happen if you do break these pet rules? Because some people might say, oh, they'll never know. You know, I'll have this many pets. I'll just get away with it. What are some of those repercussions that can happen if you do break the condo rules? Because every condo corporation, every board is policing their own rules, they're going to have their own different processes on it. But ultimately, you can be forced to leave. Which I think a lot of people don't realize. I'll, I'm sure people, when they're in a lease, they understand, oh, I, I could be forced to leave, yeah. potentially. But yeah. A, if you go full Ace Ventura, you might be gassed to leave. <laughs> potentially. And what about noise? I know some people who have some very noisy pups. How does that play a role, whether you're talking detached versus like a condo or townhouse? So when you're in a condo, you're in closer proximity to people. They're obviously going to hear it. Having gone through the pandemic, pets got spoiled with everyone being home and now... And people got a lot of pets during the pandemic. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. adopted. Yeah. We got a little lonely. It seems like separation anxiety has become a huge thing and that can really lead to, I guess, a lot of noise complaints. It might be a great time to pick up a side gig as a dog walker or a dog sitter. I guess that's something else to consider too is can you find a dog walker or dog sitter in the area that you're looking for a home to. Yeah. And again, that's something that you really, you either have to spend time doing that research yourself or make it known to your realtor. That's yeah. that's something that's really important to you and that you're going to need in the house that you're looking for. To fully understand the implications, there, there might be warnings, there might be fines. Um, but ultimately, if you're breaking the condo corporation rules, you have to find a solution where you either, it can be your fur baby has to go or you have to go. Yeah, you hear that? Max is very well behaved. He's He's got some separation anxiety, but as long as he's got a treat, he's pretty distracted. Or his squirrel. Or his squirrel. <laughs> and I know that you wanted to talk about the top three pet-friendly condos. Yeah, we're going to share three pet-friendly condos in the West End just for people. So if you're looking for a place and you want some help, these are a few places you can look at. And you can also call Kate. She's our 
resident fur baby home finding expert. <laughs> Is that an official? Uh, that should be an be official, official designation. After I'll have it name. come up on the screen at the bottom. There you go. Um, we'll start in Liberty Village in a condo I know very very well. <laughs> Five Hannah, Liberty Lofts. It's about uh, ten years old, and there's just under three hundred units there. Eight stories, seventeen foot ceilings, so you've got very high roofs there. Most of the condos, I think, on the first and second floor, they're and the penthouse, they're all one story. But most of the other ones are all two story condos. So th there are some stairs involved. If that's a factor you want to have there, they do have a dog wash facility. Very pet friendly, no size restrictions. A lot of a lot of different size dogs there. And that uh, pet wash, I didn't even know condos did that until I went to Five Hanna. If you've got a large dog and you don't want to have to take them all the way to a pet store to have them wash your dog, or I've seen some of them have the manual dog wash stations. Yeah. If that dog is too big and you just cannot lift it into the bathtub, that is yeah. huge, especially if you're out on a rainy day. The fact that it's on the first floor, you don't have to get your unit dirty at all. Bring them right into the dog wash, soak them off, bring them upstairs. Yeah. That's huge. And I think that's something a lot yeah. of people don't think about. One of the things they also have right in the same area is they've actually got full-size washing machines. Yes. A lot of condos, anybody knows me always knows how I feel about the 24-inch washer dryers. <laughs> so the, you're having a full-size one. So if you have, maybe you have a dog that, that sheds more so than others and you want to wash. Honestly, your, even just throwing this whole dog yeah. bed into the wash is huge. And there's not a lot of machines where you can do that, especially yeah. with those really large ones. And that means... Oh, you, you could do it, but it's not going <laughs> to survive too long. You're throwing that thing in your car. You're taking it through the whole condo. You're bringing it over to a laundromat. You're sitting yeah. there for two hours to use a commercial machine. Yeah. It's not a fun time um, or you're buying a new one <laughs> absolutely i find that in the condos that are dog friendly pet friendly the local dog walkers or there might be a multiple of them that, that know and you also develop other friends on walks and around the area too. yeah i think that's a huge point to consider is that when you're in a pet friendly building having an animal is something that's a really big part of your life which i hope it is for most people who own pets it's a huge responsibility it's a lot of time it should be something that you're really invested in that means the neighbors around you are all going to be open to pets. They're going to yeah. be more understanding. They're probably going to be dog or cat people. They're probably going to want to pet your dog. And when you pass them in the hall, great conversation starter. If you want a nice meet cute, get a dog, go to a dog friendly area. You're going to meet some people. Yeah. And making those friends, having those friends to go to the dog park with, having backup babysitters for your dog when you can't find someone. Yep. That's huge. Absolutely. Um, and just having common interests with people, they're predominantly going to be in that building compared to going to a building where, you know, a lot of people, maybe they have just kids, maybe they don't have pets, a little less friendly, a little harder to start conversation. Again, maybe more likely to complain about your dog if he's making some noise or yeah. pets in the hall. So I think it's a huge point of consideration. Yeah. And I think our local pet store there is Ren's Pet. Yes, Ren's Pets, which yeah. I love. <laughs> and uh, Liberty's full of... Uh, full of dogs and I think Liberty Village Park is the local one. And then if you go a little further outside Liberty up to Wellington, there's a large off-leash park too. Yeah, having off-leash parks is really huge. Yeah. This guy is not so big on dog parks. He's definitely more of a people person. He just runs between your legs from other dogs. But for people who have very high energy dogs, yeah. there are some dogs, if you don't have two hours a day to take them on walks, you have to get them into a dog park. Huskies are beautiful dogs, so much energy. Yep. My cousin has a Husky and man, anywhere you go, you have to have a lint roller and like four Red Bulls to keep up with that thing. He's getting a little older now, but every time they pet him, you could make another dog out of the amount of hair that comes out. That would be an him. interesting package combo that you could have on Amazon. <laughs> a husky package, Red Bull and lint roller. <laughs> so let's move, let's move a little further west into, into the High Park area. 383 Ellis Park. Condo a little bit older, about 16 years only has about 46 units in it and it's 10 stories. It's on the northeast corner of High Park and has that stepped look to it. It's right at the intersection, I think, of Clendenin and Bloor. And what a fantastic location. If you're any kind of outdoor person, I'm surprised, actually. Two of my friends told me this week that they've never been to High Park and one of them has lived here most of her life. And I, I can't believe that because it's such an integral part of the city. It's so beautiful. Go check out High Park, but I would say... Maybe wait a week or two because we have cherry blossoms right now. Yes. And cherry blossoms, it's absolutely chaos. But and, beautiful. I, uh, stunning, but yeah. it's it's hard to find parking. It's hard to get through Bloor West Village. Not if you live at 383 Ellis Park and can walk Absol across well, the street. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, beautiful building. I think one of the highlights of High Park for having a dog, obviously, huge park, 
but they have an eight and a half acre off leash dog area that we take Max to all the time. And it runs through High Park. There's a little doggy area that has like water pumps. The famous doggy hill. Yep, Doggy Hill. It's got water pumps. They've got toys there for larger dogs. You're constantly just finding dogs running all over. But it goes off of a standard dog park into a narrow trail. Yep. So you're walking through the woods. You're walking through the trees, getting a nice hike, but you're also fenced in. So if you have a dog that maybe isn't that good off leash, rather than taking him into a forest, you can take him into this park where you know yep. he's not going to get that far. What an amazing park to have. So close to the core of the city. I know. It's like the central park of Toronto. I always say that and some people get mad at me for saying that. It, you can't find places like that in the city anymore. I think, I think you definitely is, can't make them It anymore. is the biggest park in the city, so that makes sense. Yeah. It's massive. And there's a restaurant there. If you want to stop by, I don't know how pet friendly the restaurant is, but I'm sure you can just tie your dog up outside, grab a coffee, go for a jog, yeah. sit by the lake. It's beautiful. and It's so secluded. You can't believe you're in like the heart of Toronto. You can't believe it. And uh, that condo has no restrictions on size? but does limit it to two pets. Which, yeah, I think two is a good number. <laughs> You're gonna need a pretty massive condo to have to have more than that. Exactly. Yeah. And then moving further, further west, down into Humber Shores, we've seen a lot of new developments. So we're gonna pick uh, Vita 2, 65 Annie Craig. A lot of new developments down there, Absolutely. a lot of new condos. About a year old, 174 units, 16 stories. Now, I've just noticed this. I haven't really done an audit on it, but I feel like the developers now are a little bit more pet friendly, included somehow. So they have more of an appetite to include the the pet wash, which it has. Um, and the condo boards are also recognizing that people might have various size dogs too. Yeah, in the city, and I think especially after COVID, condos are just realizing yeah. your unit's going to sell better if you are a little bit more flexible on pets. And I understand the concern for having tighter rules. I understand wanting to keep the building clean, wanting to make sure that the grounds around it in the area is like really nice and lovely, yeah. that there aren't pets everywhere. But I do think it's very important. It's like a lot of people's lives. And I think it's just in North America, people love to have pets. Yeah. It's just part of our culture. And I think they're really starting to understand that and loosen up a little bit. I completely I, agree. I think they also look where the area is, right? Yeah. You're right on the water, beautiful paths to walk around. It's the it, beaches it, it, of the West End. It's I've sold okay. a few condos down there. It's beautiful. You've got a massive bike trail. You're right on the water. There is a small beach there, and it's private. Pretty much the only people going through there are the people who live in the neighborhood yep. or are biking through. But there are tons of dogs walking along the path. Like whenever I do showings in those buildings – there's usually a dog or two in the lobby when people are picking up their packages. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, if you're an animal lover, animals everywhere, but right on the water. And it's stunning in the winter, in the summer. It's a great location to have. Cirque du Soleil is set up right there. I saw that. Yeah, at the, uh, it used to be in my hood. It's on the old uh, Mr. Christie Cookies site. It's mm. going to be developed a ghost station and a, a bunch of different condos and retail spaces. And I think I think there's even schooling going in there. Yeah, and I think that's a really exciting thing for that location. Having yeah. that ghost station is huge. Oh, it's going to be massive. Yeah. That's so. especially if you work at Union, if you work downtown, yeah. uh, that's going to be massive. The fact that you don't need a car to commute from Humber Bay Shores yeah. is going to be huge. But yeah, Vita 2's got a pet wash, pet stores right nearby. I've actually walked into them. They're very high-end boutique, I will say. So really adorable, like dishes, customized collars. Do you remember the name? I remember seeing the names. They're like, it's like Doggy Bistro. and. There's a Doggy Bistro. Is that a chain store? I, 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 I haven't been in there before, but okay. I'm assuming based on the name that it is a bistro where you can actually bring your pet inside, which there are not very many of those. Uh, or maybe you can just bring them out onto the patio. I'm not 100% sure. And of course here at our Kingsway Etobicoke location. We are pet friendly. Yeah, if you want to come in and include your dog as part of the uh, the interview for uh, for looking for a property and meeting with us, happy yes. to do so. Yes, we're very pet friendly. I met Minnie yesterday. Yes. Which is a four pound toy poodle. She was the cutest thing I've ever seen. Shout out to Minnie. Shout out to Minnie. <laughs> yeah, feel free to drop by if you have any questions about pet friendly condos, pet friendly homes, you know, locations in the city that you should be focused on if your pet is a huge part of your life, we're more than happy to assist you with that. It, it's a big decision and we love our fur babies and keeping them happy is very important. Absolutely. 